Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 195 of our trek and yesterday we started to hike up a rationalized mountain to determine some of the reasons why we rationalize all sorts of actions and behaviors in our lives. Today we will finish our hike to the summit as we learn to make better and more logical decisions ourselves and to assist others in making better decisions. If you miss any of our days of the Wisdom Trek episodes, please go to wisdom-trek.com to listen to them and to read our daily journal. We are recording our podcast from our studios at Home 2 in Charlotte, North Carolina. If all goes according to plan, we will spend most of Saturday laying out the groundwork and business plan for our new business segment. Starting in 2016, we will be creating a community of Christian podcasters called the Christian Podcasting Network. We will start out small, but during 2016, our plan is to grow the network to the level where we will be considered the authority and the premier platform for podcasters who are Christ followers. This will include podcasts covering all areas of life and business. Some may be Christian-themed podcasts, while others will cover all areas of life and business from a biblical worldview. The remainder of our hike today will take us to the summit, and we have a lot of ground to cover, so let's get on the trail, the trail which we will call Rationalize or Rational Lies. Which is it? Part number two. We covered the first two points yesterday, so the third point we want to look at is making rational decisions. Here's an interesting thought. Once you stop living under the illusion of being an entirely rational human being, it actually helps you to make more rational decisions. While you realize emotions are driving your decisions, you can use that to your advantage. You realize that your feelings are an important part of the decision-making process. So how you feel about the decisions that you make this week, this month, and this next year, especially from a moral or ethical standpoint, is much more important than satisfying your ego and self-image today. When making decisions, always consider the long-term consequences physically, emotionally, financially, and spiritually. This will give you the strength to make rational decisions instead of rationalizing the decisions that you make. Let's look at two examples. First, say you love donuts, and who doesn't love a warm Krispy Kreme glazed donut fresh from the fryer? They taste so yummy and they literally melt in your mouth. Yet after eating several of them, you notice that they actually make you feel pretty bad afterwards. I don't mean bad as, oh, I shouldn't have eaten that bad. I mean actually physically bad. Starting about a half an hour after eating the donuts, you start to feel bloated, lethargic, and slightly irritable. Although the donuts made you feel great while you were eating them, you also rationally realize that they make you feel bad for hours afterwards, not even considering the health implications. When you think logically, you can make the decision in advance that it simply isn't worth eating the donuts. You will even feel better financially for not spending the money. So you can use logic to control your decisions. And for the second example, I don't think any of us like paying taxes, but they are needed for a civilized society to function, and they do result in many benefits for us. Most of us don't feel like the government spends the tax revenue wisely. So when you're doing your taxes, do you rationalize cheating on your tax return or not file at all? This is not only illegal, it can bring much grief if you are ever audited. In this situation, you need to plan and make rational and wise financial decisions throughout the course of the year. There are many ways to minimize your taxes legally so that you do not pay more than you actually owe. Now, as a Christ follower, I have to sadly admit that those who profess to be Christians seem to be very prone to rationalizing all sorts of behaviors in their own lives. We rationalize our behaviors while condemning and judging others for different but similar behaviors. But Jesus addressed this issue in the good news according to Luke chapter 6, verses 41 through 43. And why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, Friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck that is in your friend's eye. Awareness of when we are rationalizing our decisions based on our emotions is absolutely crucial if you're going to grow personally. To make conscious changes in your life, you first need awareness. Once you become aware of rationalizing, you can stop it and learn from your mistakes. Let's return to the example at the beginning of yesterday's podcast, where the salesperson convinced you to buy this cool new gadget. But once you got it home, you realize it's not really what you wanted. If you weren't aware of rationalizing, you would quite likely fall to the victim of what's called cognitive dissonance. And that's where you can't hold two conflicting beliefs in your mind at the same time. In this case, I make rational decisions as one thought, and this gadget I bought is useless as the second thought. Now, if you hold tightly to the premise that you make fully rational decisions, then you would have to rationalize buying the gadget. 
you come up with a whole list of features it has to convince your conscious mind that it actually was a good decision to buy it. Once you understand that all humans are prone to rationalization, you don't have to do that. You will realize that you made an irrational decision based on your emotions. You will accept and take responsibility for that fact that you bought a gadget that you don't really need and you should not be spending your money on. Then you can make sure that you don't make that same mistake in the future. You've just learned from your mistake. And the fourth point we want to look at on our trek to the rationalized mountain is helping to influence others to make rational decisions. When I talk about influencing others, I don't mean in a negative way. I am focused on the positive impact that we should always have on others in all areas of life. This is part of the legacy that we are living each day. Just as with ourselves, others make decisions based on what they want. So when you try to have a positive impact on somebody, remember that people don't make decisions on what they need. People don't make decisions on what you think they need. People don't even make decisions based on what you think that they should want. And certainly, people do make decisions based on what they want. Just as with yourself, to impact others, you have to help them to learn that all decisions have consequences. Lovingly help them to understand that when making decisions, they always need to consider the long-term consequences. All decisions do impact us physically, emotionally, financially, and spiritually. Rationalizations of bad or unwise decisions will limit their ability to make wise and rational choices in the future. If you want to help somebody to make a positive change in their lives, remember to meet them where they are, but not in a judgmental way. Helping them to see the wisdom in making rational decisions may be beyond their current worldview or paradigm, so frame it in a way that they can understand. Always remember we are all on this trek of life together. We are all prone to rationalize the decisions that we make. Let's make sure that we remove the log from our own eye so that we can see clearly to help others remove the speck from their eye. On our trek to the summit of Rationalized Mountain, we have learned much about the decisions that we make. Let's apply this learning to each day. One rational decision you can make today is to share Wisdom Trek with your friends and family. Encourage them to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek creating a legacy and starting tomorrow we will remain in camp for a week as we resume digging for nuggets of wisdom from the book of proverbs and we'll be continuing with chapter six that will finish our podcast for today remember to listen to your daily dose of wisdom each day at wisdom-track.com or subscribe at itunes google play stitcher soundcloud or many of the other social media environments And once again, please share Wisdom Trek with your family and friends through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person so that they can come along with us each day. The journal for today's trek can be found at wisdom-trek.com. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I do consider you my friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, Lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.